If you are the most intelligent NASCAR fan on the planet, then who's your top five drivers? Chase Elliott, Chase Elliott the second, Chase Elliott the third, Chase Elliott the fourth. That's an expert analysis there, sir. Eric Amarola is the best driver ever! It has been a while since I actually uh, talked to you guys like in this format. The offseason is uh, in full effect. Uh, finals as well and all that stuff. Just have not been making a lot of videos lately. Uh, but this is one that I have had on my mind for a while and wanted to make. Uh, mainly because it will drive the comment section crazy with many different opinions. And uh, something that I think is not talked about enough right now. It's always been... Who's the top five of all time, or who's the top five of a certain generation, or top ten, or whatever, whoever's this, whoever's that, and that's actually pretty well known at this point. We know, you know, you, you put guys like Gordon, Earnhardt, uh, Jimmy, and and Petty, and, and Yarbrough, and all these, and Allison, you put all those guys in there. What does it look like right now? I think that's something that's actually really interesting to look at. Um, because I don't think there's a clear top five. I, I, I really don't think so. So in the comment section below, put down your top five, and I think you're gonna notice how different everyone else's is. Uh, from each other just because of how I would say the competition is better uh, today. I think more drivers have actually become more talented um, and there's just better competition overall. Now there are a few honorable mentions I want to put in here right off the bat. Uh, there are just some guys I don't think have not, they haven't done enough yet um, in, in, or hasn't, haven't even gotten to the top of the cup series yet uh, to be in this list. So a few guys, uh, I'm putting Martin Truex Jr. as an honorable mention. He did not crack my top five. I think he is one of the best out there. Joey Logano as well. Brad Keselowski is in uh, the honor honorable mentions. I think Keselowski is one of the best drivers. He, if I had to put him in a certain like top 10, I think I put him number six. I think his, his driving skill set is amazing. You can see it on plate tracks. You can see it uh, on a lot of intermediate tracks as well. He just is really good um, with his car control and, and just being able to every uh, being able to understand everything that's going on around him. Christopher Bell is someone I think that will be in the top three in the next few years, uh, but he hasn't even really, he hasn't gotten to the Cup Series yet. Uh, he's an amazing talent. You can see him battle out with Kyle Larson on dirt tracks a lot. Uh, so Christopher Bell's in uh, honorable mentions as well. And I think that's really it for, for the honorable mentions. Uh, let's now go into the top five. So the five best drivers in NASCAR currently, the way this, I have this kind of like planned out is basically, we're gonna use past stats, obviously, that's, that's a big deal, but it's also gonna be very focused on uh, driver talent. So when you watch a race, you can kind of see what moves a driver makes uh, at some tracks more than others. That's for example, short tracks, you can really kind of see what how a driver is, the kind of personality that comes out of a driver. Um, for example, Martin Truex Jr., incredibly clean, won't really touch anyone, uh, and that's just how he is. Um, but some other guys, like Jeff Gordon, will, will do a bump and run on you um, and just not wreck you, but just try to get you out of the way. Uh, Truex won't even really want to do that. He just wants to kind of go clean. So personality really shows uh, style of driver. Kyle Larson is someone that, that definitely shows in terms of personality because you can see him with slide jobs and a lot of the dirt tactics that he brings over to the asphalt uh, and just how he drives. Um, something that also like Dale and her Jr. when he was driving uh, in his prime when he would always run the high line and, and kind of just yaw the car out just like Casey Kane as well. These are all kind of little personalities or abilities that drivers have that you can see in every single race. So I took that into account as well. Race wins, championships, uh, strength on a certain team. So if you are on a weaker team, uh, but you're really outperforming every other teammate, that puts a big boost on your number as well. And just being able to drive at everything. So from dirt to stock cars to uh, being good at short tracks, road courses, the whole nine. When something gets thrown in your face, like how good are you right, right off the bat? So that's how I came up with this top five. So number five, I'm going to put Chase Elliott. Now Chase Elliott is still very young. Like I said, with past stats, you know, he doesn't show up yet. I mean, you, you could put Truex, you could put Keselowski, you could put a lot of people in front of him. Uh, but what gives Chase Elliott the big bump is, is his rise into the Cup Series. He did incredibly well in the trucks. He did in incredibly well in the Xfinity Series, especially I think it was that Darlington race where he really outclassed a lot of people. Ever since he's been into the Cup Series, he has been Hendrick Motorsports' best driver, and he's going up against the likes of Jimmy Johnson and was Dale Earnhardt Jr., now Alex Bowman, and William Byron. But it's not just that he's the best driver by a little bit, or, you know, he, he's the only one at Hendrick right now that you actually think has a shot to win. Sometimes the organization just really isn't clicking, but that one guy is, and it really does look like Chase Elliott. There are a lot of things I think Chase can work on, though. I think his restarts are something that really need to be worked on. Uh, he's not as aggressive as a few other people, um, and I think that's that's something he could do. What, why I see Chase Elliott being being so incredibly good right now is just 
consistent lap times, getting the most out of a car. I think those races where you see him running 6th or 7th and his teammates are running 15th, I think he really is getting the most out of the car that he has. So that's why I put him at number five for now. Number four, I have Kyle Larson. Now, Larson was higher than this, in, in my opinion, in the last few months, even the last few years. The reason why I put him at number four is because this past season for him was, was not very good. He didn't win a race, uh, he, and he made a lot of mistakes too. And that's something that I think will he will eventually learn. Maybe he's trying too hard. I think even more so than Chase, he is in even worse equipment. I, I don't think Ganassi is up to the level as Hendrick, but maybe they are because Hendrick is just so bad right now. Uh, but Larson, as Elliot does, uh, completely out duels his teammates or teammate, which was Jamie McMurray. And next year will be Kurt Busch in that one car. But Larson is, is incredible, especially when it comes to just driving anything. He will drive anything and everything out there um, on dirt or on asphalt. And he is very, very good at it. I think his short track uh, racing can improve a little bit uh, as well as road course racing can improve a little bit. That's where I think he needs to step up. But Larson, in terms of just being able to wheel a car, get everything out of it on the edge of losing control and still being able to control the car, uh, that's something that's really good. Maybe he has to learn a little bit about just managing the car sometimes because he has had many issues with just pushing a little bit too hard. But I think everyone here knows Larson is is really good. So I don't think that's going to be a problem. But I think Kyle Larson has huge upside potential. I think already he is in the top five of, of best drivers. Uh, he is just so, so good. Uh, and we're going to see what he has in the future. He's going to be a champion. I'm almost positive of that. It's just how many championships will he win and how many races will he win? Number three on the list is Kevin Harvick. Now, Kevin Harvick does not get talked about enough, in my opinion. It's because the first couple of years he was in NASCAR, he was on RCR, and RCR was not uh, the strongest team out there. If you look at the stats, you have that one odd year of uh, 2006 where he did really well with the five race wins, but then it took another few years in 2010, 2011 to get going. Uh, but RCR just never really showcased uh, Harvick's ability. Once you hit 2014, it, it becomes very apparent as to how good he can actually become. Harvick has taken that four car and and, and that team and they have been so dominant it's insane uh, it's not just how many wins he has not just how many top fives top tens he has it's the way he wins a race or the way he can literally dominate a race the way he can just harvicking at atlanta in the bottom lane and just pull away and do it lap after lap after lap and be in such good control uh, that is what really basically impressed me with Harvick. I think sometimes he could do a little bit of a better job of closing, even though his nickname is The Closer. I, there are so many times where he's trying to run someone down for the win and just couldn't do it. I think not all of that is his fault. A lot of it is the car and, you know, with dirty air, not being able to get uh, to someone. But he's just so incredibly good. Uh, he should be a multiple cup champion by now. But because when he got into that four car was also the first year of this four race, you know, craziness at Homestead it's really hard to become multiple. I mean, that's why we haven't had a, a, a multiple winning champion in this format every year from 2014 to 2018. We've had a different champion. Uh, so I don't put that on Harvick. I think the championship stat is a little bit tainted now because it is so hard to put everything into one race and try to win it there. But Oh, his consistency over the five seasons that he has been at SHR and what he did at RCR just carrying that team year in and year out, I think uh, he is definitely in the top three for me. He is ahead of Larson and Elliott for now. That might not be the case for long. I think those two will overtake him eventually. But right now, as of this very moment, uh, Kevin Harvick is the third best driver, in my opinion. Number two for me is Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy's stats are, I mean, they're insane. 83 wins, seven championships. We all know he's one of the greatest of all time, if not probably probably could be the greatest of all time in NASCAR just based off the stats, the championships and everything like that. That's a huge deal. That's why he's in my top two. The last few years for Jimmy have been rough and they, that's what's knocked him a, a good amount. He's never been the most popular guy. He's never been the outright fastest guy, but during that stretch when he won five straight championships that him and that team would step up in that 10 race uh, stretch and just dominate and be incredible. And every championship that you see of Jimmy, except kind of for 2016, but every other championship you see is well-deserved. Uh, when he gets into that chase era, he is able to just pop off the wins and, and be incredibly consistent, not get into too many wrecks or mistakes and, and all that. You can also see his, his driving talent on the dirt side, just being able to handle a very loose race car. That's how Jimmy likes it. He, he handles a very loose race car. Uh, he has incredible car control. Um, un I think Jimmy's been underrated 
hated his entire career. Especially during the five straight championships, a lot of people hated him because he was winning too much, and now it's kind of flipped the switch, and now everyone really wants him to do well again because he's not been doing well the last two years. So the last two years is what has taken that big knock on him. It's hard to tell whether Jimmy has lost a little bit of his, of his mojo or whether the team is just that poor. I think most of it is the team. I think that's, that's very clear that Hendrick Motorsports has been very poor. But that one race at the Roval where, you know, if you just have a decent enough car and, and you take that driving talent and you see what Jimmy could do with it. Yes, he made the mistake entering uh, that, that chicane for the win, but that's because he's gone so long without winning and he's trying to push so hard to get it. Nowadays, we talk so much about Logano and Truex and Kyle Busch and Harvick and, and Elliott and Larson. And I just think Jimmy gets overlooked a lot. And when we're talking about top five drivers of right now, right now, I think Jimmy has to be in the top three, maybe even number one or, you know, number two. I have him at number two. uh, And it's just because everything you've seen in the past cannot be ignored. Um, What we're seeing in the present is kind of sad to see. And, you know, he's not being able to showcase his full talent. Um, That team's been making mistakes. He's been making mistakes. But I think before he retires, you will see him kind of step back up. I still think he will win championship number eight. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I still think he will get championship number eight. And uh, yeah, he's definitely number two on my list. And now the number one driver in NASCAR right now. Uh, I haven't said his name yet, so I think you guys know who it is. Some of you probably won't be happy, but it is Kyle Busch. This guy's insane. I mean, from every series, the Cup Series included, but every series, how many races he's won over the last uh, few years or even the last decade, I still think of Kyle Busch as being a young driver, but he's been in the sport since like 2005. So that's 13 years. That's, it's, it's hard for me to think of that because I still think of him as being so young, but right now he's actually dead on in his prime, you know? So that's, and what he's doing in his prime is, is pretty goddamn good. The last four years for Kyle Busch have been so good. Five wins, four wins, five wins, eight wins. He won the championship in 2015. Very similar to Harvick. I think he should be a multiple time champion by now, but again, with the format, very hard to do. But he's been in that final four. He's been so incredibly good. He had to go through a maturing process early in his career. You know, when he first went to Gibbs, that 2008 year when he was so incredibly good, but it, it didn't really work out when the chase came around. All those things helped him learn, uh, especially the injury when he won his championship. That injury at Daytona, took the time off, came back, won the championship. That championship is sometimes looked at as being a little bit tainted because, yes, he missed 13 races, but then he had to come back. He had to get within a certain number of, uh, I think it was the top 30 in points, um, had a win, and uh, he did all that, and he won the championship. So, I mean, he still did it. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's it's tainted too much. He, he still won it um, in a all, well, as fair as you can with the format. But it's really what he does on the track. I think we've all known when we see Kyle Busch, the amount of saves he's had in a car, the, the amount of just pure car control he has, just how fast he is. He can be silky smooth. He can also be out of control. But both ways, he can be incredibly dummy fast. It is insane to actually watch. Whether it is with KBM or with JGR, he has shown uh, he has the equipment, he has a driving ability, he can win the races. He outperforms his teammates, even in that equipment. He's always outperformed his teammates, uh, except the only time he hasn't has been Hendrick Motorsports. But again, he was very young then. So once he moved to JGR, he has been incredible. When he went, when he goes to Xfinity Series race in JGR, and you know you have guys like Hamlin or other guys that fill in that role, but when Kyle Busch runs it, he wins. He wins a lot. And uh, I think that just shows just how good he is. He's good on dirt. He's good on asphalt. He's good at road courses. He's good, good at short tracks. He's good at plate racing. He's good at the intermediate stuff. He's the all-around perfect driver. He's not scared to get a little bit dirty with, like, let's say Kyle Larson, where he just knocked him out of the way after Larson tried pulling the slide job. He's not afraid to put the bumper to you. He's not afraid to rough you uh, rough you up a little bit, but he will race you clean. Uh, once Kyle Busch has matured, he, he's a very clean race car driver. Uh, it's just certain times where he has to race really hard that he will. But I think more and more people now are starting to understand and appreciate how good he is. I think lately you've been hearing a lot more cheers on the track than boos, and that's because he is just, he's, they are starting to see the talent. And uh, he's going to go, I think in my opinion, he's going to go down as one of the top 10 drivers of all time. I don't know if he can crack into the top five. There's still many years left for him. Um, But he's definitely, for me, top 10. uh, And now he might be knocking on the door. He's going to have to do a lot, but he could possibly, maybe, get into the top five with a few more championship wins, a lot more uh, race wins. Uh, He's one of the best drivers out there. Currently, right now, I don't think... In my opinion, there's any debate, he is the best driver in NASCAR. So that is my list. It is Chase Elliott, Larson, Harvick, Johnson, and Kyle Busch that rounds out my top five currently at this moment. 
best drivers in NASCAR. Again, comment down below with what your list is, your reasonings for it, uh, and I will see you guys later. Hope you are having a fantastic day. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you are not already. Enjoy the off-season. A few more videos uh, if I have time coming up, um, and a few more ideas that I have. So I'll see you guys later. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Enjoy your weekend. Take care. It's not take care. It's peace out. Peace out. Even if I tried, even if I wanted to, and I can't change. Even if I tried, my love, my love, my love, she keeps me warm.